everyone. Welcome to another episode of Digital for Everyone. Thanks for joining us. Digital for Everyone is a weekly live series that tries to demystify the digital world for everyone. I'm your host, as always, Robert DeGans, and today's episode we cap off the month of focus on creatives who have suffered um, quite tremendously in this entire um, sort of pandemic. Welcome, Nikita the Samal. Welcome, Mikhail 868. <clears throat> Sawi Lu, how are you doing? Um, as I was saying, Ryan Olson, welcome, welcome. Um, creatives have suffered sort of, you know, critically because they're, they're not considered, you know, essential workers. You have your film, you have your music, you have your arts, and the, all of these industries are suffering. Um, we have with us tonight, I think, a great um, speaker, Stephen Taylor. I'm going to be able to actually, um, I know Stephen whew, since 2000, um, could be, I know Stephen a long time. Welcome, Daniel Loveless. How are you doing? Um, we'll find out what you know a little later tonight. Um, but we are here talking about creatives and creativity as currency. I think Stephen's going to be a great um speaker on it. Um, he's a three-time national scholarship winner. He's a renowned producer, director, and special effects makeup artist. Um, some of you may know, a few years ago, um, while we wait for Stephen to join us, um, a few years ago, when there was that that image that circulated around Marshall, he looked like he was dead, and it was, um, there was blood all over his face. That was actually Stephen, Stephen's work. Stephen's work as a um, as a special effects makeup artist. So, you know, Stephen's been out here doing good stuff. And I think, um, welcome Stephen, how are you doing? It's helpful. So we have Stephen joining us here tonight. Welcome, sir. Yeah, alive, well, yeah, alive. <laughs> <laughs> I see you repping the 868. Yes, yes, and the Reem Granola. Sorry, I yes, and, and, and eating the Reem Granola, guys. Yeah, Stephen, has, yeah. Stephen has launched his own brand of granola. Mm -hmm. um, and his hairstyle is sponsored by The Weeknd. Um, <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> well, <laughs> I how is everything? I Sorry? The I couldn't grow the beard, so I had to go the opposite direction. Well, you know, not, not many people can grow a beard like this, and I, I will take what I can. Um, Loveless is saying he's loving the, the rep in the 868, the, the, um, the flag in the back and everything. All the way, no matter where I go, all the way 868, we don't play. So where, you're in Trinidad now, yes? Still? I am, yeah, I am okay. now. Okay, okay. Um, so, guys, I just want to introduce you to, to Stephen really quickly. He's a three-time national scholarship winner. He's a master special effects makeup artist and an MFA in film alum from USC Los Angeles. What is an MFA? Master of Fine Arts? Yes? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I still remember some acronyms. Um, <laughs> Stephen's experience as a creative in his 30s is, is already very vast. Now, I know, Stephen, I know you from TD class in QRC. Ma, you know, Magna Best. But, um, but, you know, it's clearly you've gone on to do bigger, you know, bigger, better things. And I brought you on you know, I spoke to you earlier on and I said I wanted to focus this month on creatives. And I think that, you know, the creative industry has so, so critically been hit in terms of not being able to, to, to work because they're not deemed essential, you know. They're some of the last people that are going to get to go back out there. We saw films either canceled sh shooting, you know, pushed back for years, uh, for a year to release. Uh, so it's definitely very, very heavily impacted. We've we spent the whole month talking about like music and you know carnival industry and you know makeup and stuff like that, and we capping it off with film, right? And I spoke to you and I said, you know, I thought, all right, Stephen, Stephen, it's a good idea to talk to Stephen about, um, you know, the film industry. And you came to me with the topic and said, you know, creativity as currency, and I thought it was very interesting because you know essentially that's what we're all selling. Mm -hmm. You know, our creativity for money. But, mm -hmm. you know, what, let's, let's dive into that. You know, talk to me about that. What, what do you mean by that? And again, thanks, thanks, Robert, for having mm -hmm. me on, on the, the selection panel. It was very rigorous. I must let your viewers know. They didn't let any and everybody come on this live. I actually auditioned <laughs> five times. And um, 
even my youth, my my QRC connections didn't help me. So thank you so much. Digital for everyone if you're out there and you're, you're, you're alive, drop some flames in the comments. Um, Guys, you, you just you, you just need two people. If you bring two people, you can join Digital for everyone. <laughs> So yeah, guys, thanks so much for, for chiming in. I've seen some familiar faces. Um, essentially, creativity as currency. I mean, and of course, Robert, I would have looked at a lot of the interviews we had with James and just everybody. Um, mm -hmm. Creativity as currency. Where, how it started for me, I had to prove to my parents that my art could make money. That's literally where it started. It was, well, that artist thing. Mm, you see Leroy Clark? Who's Leroy Clark? You see, you don't even know who they are. You understand? Like, that's where it kind of started for me. How are you going to survive on this? And of course, I did Spanish, French, I did the TD, like you mentioned, geography. Mm -hmm. And the first thing was my parents were trying to get me to work in an oil company and saying, you know, you could probably use the language to translate and, you know, you like to yeah. travel the world. And I said, well, I do like languages, but maybe mm -hmm. I can, my, my language would be film art. So, right, right. off the bat, I had to try to figure out um, on my own, how can I show my parents? How can I show that the, the people who support me and just really want the best of me? How can mm -hmm. I show them that I can live off of my art? And first, okay. it started with painting because I couldn't afford a camera. I couldn't afford film. I wasn't, I wasn't mm -hmm. fortunate like that. So I started with paper, 2D. Right. And my first competition, I won $2,000. My mom okay. saw... Um, something in the paper saying, you know, paint this, I think it was optometrist today, I believe, so take the plug there, optometrist. And essentially, I painted this thing at home, mm -hmm. on, on the ground, on the terrazzo, back in the day, and I got a call, boom, money. Okay. And then I did it again for, for BG, British Gas. I painted their first science bus, and they used the, pa okay. the uh, work to plaster the entire bus, and I want that $2,000. In fact, I am watching that photo right now in my my. My site right there. You know, I, I've known you I've known you for I don't want to say how many years, but I never knew you started off with painting. I but did. okay. I, cool did. I started off painting. In fact I have a, a I think I'll have my wife bring that that painting there for you. But yeah, that's Pre where I started and I show you know what I'm going to show you all digital for everyone. Let me just sure. super cross. I'm Let's. right here. You guys can hear me because I use these these things inspire me all the time. This right. is your boy at 12 years old with his prize winning painting. Look, your boy, the, the, <laughs> the graphic I just stretch my head a little bit, but that is your boy. <laughs> right? You're sure he stretched your head? <laughs> right? <laughs> so, this is, this is where your boy started at 12 years old. Okay. And um, yeah, I just used to paint, and that's where I started with still images to, to create, to sort of distill what's in my mind. And slowly but surely, my parents start to realize that mm -hmm. we, this painting thing have currency. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. So you, you convinced your parents. That was the first step. You convinced your parents. Mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming the next step was to convince other people that, you know, listen, I have, and I know, I mean, without getting into too much of this story, I know that you had for a while um, some issues with, the funding to actually go to USC, right? Right. And and you came up with very creative ways to, to fund that. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. I had some ideas. Guys, Robert encouraged me to strip. I said, no, that's not the way to go. So I decided on <laughs> that's other not means. not true. <laughs> I decided just on so, other means. Just so anyone knows, that's <laughs> not true. Just so. Essentially, again, mm -hmm. just to the creativity. And, and, and that's how we'll, I guess, we'll get to read Grinnell at some point. Essentially, mm -hmm. it was... First, convincing myself that this is okay. something that I enjoy, I love. If I were to do this for the rest of my life and die, I would be mm. happy. I would feel like I lived my life. So that was the first part, convincing yourself, intrinsically being motivated, right? Um, okay. And then, of course, uh, convincing your, your circle that's around you. So, you know, your family, your brother, your sister, mom, dad, all those folks. Um, so then raising funds now because your boy decided he wanted to do two things that we don't really talk about in this space. I want to be a special effects makeup artist after right. seeing Jurassic Park. And then I which, also wanted to study film. Which is, I mean, I, I think you might be the only special effects makeup artist I know. You know, it's not a, a very common thing that you would see locally. 
No, and in fact, it was it wasn't a common thing at all. I became the mm -hmm. first makeup artist in Trinidad Tobago to study animatronics um, at that mm -hmm. level. And essentially, Jurassic Park, you know, if any of you all saw Jurassic Park, drop it in the comments, that inspired mm -hmm. me. So that I went on to do, and then it was filmmaking. Of course, in my family, uh, we never had any filmmakers. It was eight to four government work, as they say. And you're, you're secure and you have security. So right. I decided to do some research and I found out that a lot of people actually create their dreams and make their reality by taking up scholarships. So, okay. so that's when I started to do research because no was not an answer for me. I went online. I, I realized that a lot of government ministers took scholarships. A lot of creatives have scholarships, mm -hmm. have grants, have bursaries. There are people wanting to give you money to pursue your yeah. dream, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, I was sure. like, you know what, Robert? I really want to do this. Mm -hmm. I did one thing at OJT once as a graphic artist, mm -hmm. and I wanted to die. <laughs> I was like, you know what? This is not for me. No offense to anybody on the live who's doing that. I think mm -hmm. OJT is an amazing program. It gives you an entry-level access into a working environment. However, I prefer with 12 hours on a set doing what I love. So okay. to get to your, to your question, you mm -hmm. all had to raise funds. I had an amazing support system, not only in my family, but with my, within my friends. I see Tristan mm -hmm. on the inside, Navid on the inside. And I hosted, mm -hmm. I think, about nine or seven fundraisers. So yeah. this is where the, the entrepreneur side of me first showed its fun head, right, so to speak. Right. I sold five fingers outside my university. That was UWE at the time. Right. And people slow down and when they were like, yo, that's you. I say, is either you're buying or you're not buying. If not, you're causing traffic. So that was, <laughs> that was the first place, selling five things. Right. I washed cars. That's where I broke down in tears. I remember that. That was on national TV. It was the first time Watch I was it. like, yo, this thing real intense, boy. Like, mm -hmm. I am like a spranger right now on the pavement on Stanmore Avenue washing cars. Mm -hmm. um, I did a curriculum called Dan Rice Education. I sold my, my first uh, movie that won People's Choice Award at the movie town, Buck. I sold right. uh, I remember special Buck, copies yeah. of that, right? And mm -hmm. I had a friend, Stevie, he had a gospel concert and he gave me some proceeds from the ticket. And then we also had Wine and Cut, which was the first set in that year. I think it was 2014 or so. It was a Black mm -hmm. Light Cooler event. And again, my friends came out, dancers, actors, even mm -hmm. entertainers came out and truly showed support. And that was the, the night before my grandmother died. So it was oh, just like so yeah. much happening at the same time, but no wasn't the answer. So I, I want to I wanna take a pause there. And I think that's what, what you pointed out is, is a mentality that served you well in the past and it's just going to serve you well, you know, now in this hard time. So mm -hmm. um, I like that, you know, no, no, isn't, you're not taking no for an answer. You know, you... You hustled and, and as you said, you washed cars to pay for your way to, to, to achieve your dreams and stuff like that. And unfortunately for a, a lot of people, that's going to be the, the reality. You know, you may, not, you may not get to do what you were trained to do or want to do, but, you know, hustle has to happen. You know, money has to, money has to be made. Bills have to be paid. Um, okay. So, so you, you grew up with that mentality, which I think made you... I mean, uniquely positioned to speak in this in, in this particular um, uh, perspective. So you're creating value uh, as as so using your craft. Now, what we were talking about before, you kind of leveraged lots of different things, but not all were related to your technical expertise or your or your um, makeup. You you did both. This, this, this is the mm -hmm. thing. This is how I tied it all in, and so this right. is where for me the creativity is the currency. Let's start okay. from wine and cut. Wine and Cut was the first fest in 2014 called, it was a black light cooler event. Okay. So here is how I leverage the creativity. Mm -hmm. First of all, people had to have black light on them. They, it had okay. to be painted on them. Mm. Uh, also, so that was part of the draw. We mm. only had black lights there. Also, your creativity, I had it in a creative space. So I frequent the yeah. black box, big up all yourself, trick and out. Yeah. And of course, through that patronage of the space and the artists in that space, my creativity on the whole lends itself to creating a fan base or support system of mm -hmm. like-minded individuals. 
So that's okay. the creativity there because we have to look at creativity as being innovative and out of the box. It's not just painting or filming because it's like right. creativity is that thing that, we, that you come out from nowhere and you create. Um, mm -hmm. Even with washing the cars, before I got to washing the cars, I had to create posters. I had okay. to create marketing material. I had to create a banner. I had to create right. some brand story. So that ties back into the storytelling aspect mm -hmm. of film, where you have to create a beginning, a middle, and end, a, a, mm -hmm. a, an engaging character, a story. How, how do you now, especially in this digital age where digital is for everyone, how do you do that in 30 seconds while we're right. scrolling through the many channels of our you know, friends' profiles? So that's where the creativity, now I look at my storytelling ability. Mm -hmm. I look at how I would, you know, direct my story in a really, really concise to the point and vulnerable way. Like, yeah. just be real, just be open. Um, mm -hmm. So that, to me, is how I always tied it back in. And, oh, I also um, did special effects makeup courses. So I, right. yes. not, I only, yeah, not only um, was raising funds, but I poured back into people who at that time had nowhere else to go to learn special effects makeup. So once again, using the creativity, giving mm -hmm. back, and still now creating that symbiosis, which people forget when they are going into any kind of relationship. What are you giving to the other person so right. that they can give to you? So I actually, I want to um, underscore a point you made there, the storytelling um the what one thing i found i mean i've, I've worked in the in the advertising industry for about 10 years and mm -hmm. one of the biggest things that i learned from i've been in different industries and learned from different grades and sort of like um story, people don't buy products mm -hmm. you know they buy stories right um and and that's that's the difference between you know errol um errol fabian's go fund me going crazy and somebody else's go fund the business, you know, okay, well, their friends and stuff will support them. It is the, it's the story that you tell. And I think creative people, you're right, have some of the best ways of telling stories and vulnerability is a true, true thing. You know, it, it's, you, you're not going to be, you're not going to you know, try and guilt people into, into supporting you. But at the same time, you know, be real. <laughs> Everybody understands that this is a pandemic and some people are doing, have it worse than others. Uh, so, Guys, if, if I get on the source, so far we have we've heard from um, Stephen. Take take no, don't take no for an answer. You know, leverage your creativity not not just within your art form, but in everything, and um, you know, tell that story. And you, right? and you know, uh, you know what's interesting about that too. Um, I like that you talked about is the storytelling. Most times, as creatives. We mm -hmm. are telling a story that's outside of us. It may be packaged within the art. It may mm -hmm. be packaged within the dance movements. But most mm -hmm. times we aren't willing to be the story, to be yeah. vulnerable, to expose ourselves. Point. We write characters and we hide behind their names. But we mm -hmm. never want to really live that life. I have, I've had so many creators. There was this one person I met. He said, you know, I got into Berkeley. I said, that's amazing. Dread, you got into Berkeley for music, etc." Mm -hmm. He said, yes. I said, so what are you doing? Well, I have to raise funds. I said, and you told anybody? No. Why? Ashamed. Why are you ashamed? Well, you know, it's it kind of weird to ask people. For... I said, well, yeah. you are a musician. You don't have to ask people. Why not throw a concert? Yeah, but then the concert would be like a benefit. I said, you are overthinking this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you're not. You're <laughs> you know up. what I mean? And I find so many people are just afraid to just, yo, Robert, hear this story, quick story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I go into stress, washing car, you know, all kind of crap, looking mm -hmm. like real lame, but I have that fire burning in me, right? Mm -hmm. Fire burning, I have to do this. And never forget this day. And my granny had cancer at the time. This was before she died, cancer. I had a really low day. And um, I was driving around and I was like, you know what? God was the real scene. Also, guys, I ain't doing this on my own. I believe in a higher being, a God, a universal energy. That's for me. That's not for right. everybody, but it works for me, all right? So I have to acknowledge that. And I went home on YouTube, 
And that's that YouTube video can be found right now. It was my most vulnerable video ever. Creasy down, my shit, shit color stretch up. Shameless <laughs> yeah. plug. Shame, shame. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, that, that video went viral and people from all over the world reached out to help. And in fact, that one video got me a call from somebody who didn't even want to be mentioned. And that person mm-hmm. footed the um, letter that I needed right. before I got the National Scholarship to USC. And if I oh, were okay. not vulnerable, if I didn't go out there and just tell my story as a creative and use yeah. this platform in a creative way to distribute and disseminate this story, I mean, yeah. I have gone through that journey. So it's just like, guys, people need to know to help. If I don't know you're struggling, or if I don't know you're making your new earrings, or if I don't know you actually yeah. like to act, if I don't know you really have a desire to sing, how mm-hmm. can I then plug your name in various spaces? How can your friends say, yo, yeah. I know Robert actually, you know, he loves ballet. He wants to start, you know, doing ballet. But we are so ashamed uh-huh. of these things that we want. You know what I mean? Just yeah. go for yeah. it. Really. Yeah. That is, that. I mean, I think, I mean, if even if we if we ended the conversation right here, I think that's one of the most important messages. You know, um, you you hit he hits on a good point. You know, so so much as creatives, and I consider myself loosely a creative, that so much of us, our time is spent being paid to to tell compelling stories for other people. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, and being able to it, it is it is a vulnerable thing. It's a scary thing to tell your own story to be judged. You know, to put yourself up for ridicule or or, or comment or, or critis- criticism. So, I mean, it is terrifying, but it's one of those things that I think, you know, being homeless is more terrifying if you um. Katrin is saying you're smarter than you look. Guys, bad. actually, if, if you're in the if you if you're in the comments and you want to ask some questions or, or shout out some perspectives, please do. Um, this is a very much uh, a, a collaborative thing, so. So even kind of kind of talking about creating value and stuff like that. I, I, when you have your creativity, you're creating value. But I think the next big question that a lot of people I've had it asked to me, um, and people don't know, like knowing your worth. It's one thing to be like, okay, I need this money now, but mm-hmm. not not underselling yourself so that you, because you know that will. Granted, you may want to have a discount on on your services now or whatever, but. Um, not underselling yourself so that you don't get pigeonholed into, yeah, he'll do cheap stuff. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So to talk, talk to me a little bit about, like, how do you maintain your, like, oh, you know what, I'm a creative and, I, and I'm desperate right now, but I'm also not willing to, you know. Let's talk, talk a little bit about that for me. Yeah, great question. Um, it starts by understanding what your value is. Mm-hmm. What your value is. Not anybody else's. You're not comparing right. what your value is. I remember came back home doing special effects. Everybody wanted to exploit your boy, right? But I knew yeah. I am a young and in the game. I may have this niche expertise, but I'm still a fresh face. So right. we understand what the value is. We do a little bit of research. We say, okay, somebody with my caliber out throughout the world, that's another um, tip, guys. Mm-hmm. When I price or I encourage anybody who's under my umbrella, we have international costs. So that's where we start. U.S. dollars, okay. global dollars, so that mm. you start from that space and then you could go up or down based on discounts, etc. Okay. So I, I figured that out because we're only working with uh, that kind of um, global perspective all the time. Now, let's say you have a job that's worth $10. You think right. I, should be, I should be paid $10 for this. But Robert says, yo, I only have five. Why? You it don't. doesn't mean no. I Robert is you. This is my time now, guys. <laughs> okay, all right, no problem. <laughs> no, I just use it. You just, you're just here, right? We talking, right? Okay. So five dollars. Some show access pro bono. I say create some value with the extra five dollars because not because you only have five dollars, Robert. Does it mean that mm-hmm. this job all of a sudden cost or is valued at five dollars? It's still ten dollars. Okay. I think the mistake we make at times is we then devalue your offering instead of finding a replacement or something similar in which to take up that extra five. So, for example, if you're mm-hmm. working with, let's say, you're working with a model and you're right. a photographer 
and you tell that model, hey, my gate, it's, it's $10 for me. Model mm-hmm. says, hey, I only have five. Then you right. say, okay, well, with the extra five that, you know, you can't really afford right now, mm-hmm. maybe you can pose for me mm-hmm. for a day or two. Maybe you okay. can so, be a brand ambassador for me. So now right. you are getting the same amount of value, but in it's a not all way. cash. It's not all cash. And that's so, when you're starting up. I know that I know that we learned this in, in POB in school. Um, it's called the barter system. <laughs> the barter system, yes, it works really well. And so, if, you, uh, if you have that, you figure out what your value is, then you're not really going in and boy, them the money pay me fire, boy. I never forget. I did um special effects for Marshall Montano for a Bob right. Rum music video. Uh, your boy yeah. came in and they cut me down one time. It's like, oh, boy, makeup man. I know I just win this over. I don't need makeup man, but oh, boy, boy, makeup man. They didn't even know my name at the time. I was just makeup man. Yes, that's where your boy start. Make who's a makeup man, boy? Anyway, they cut my, my price in half. Shoo! I right. said, okay, well, Marshall, you need to mention my name in every press that you have. Right. So he said, I know thing, I nothing to do. So he was true to his word. And every time he talked about that music video, mm-hmm. my name was mentioned in full. Right. I couldn't pay for that press. I couldn't pay for that access. That was leveraged now on the, the half that I didn't get paid with the cash. Right. So they are used again, creativity and negotiation as currency. Mm-hmm. Because now Marshall endorsing you, even though he didn't pay you the whole rate, I couldn't have paid for a PR agent, a publicist, to put my name in there to endorse it at that stage. So, okay. Um, now, ha- hang on one second. We've got a mm-hmm. lot of questions going on in the comments. And I also, um, I want to, um, somebody had actually said, Navid Lancaster is actually talking about exposure. Now, I want to, I'd, I'd like you to kind of talk about, okay, there's a difference between get trading work and saying, okay, well, you know what? I'm not going to take, you know, I, I need $10 worth of something. If mm-hmm. you can only give me $5 and $5 worth of something, you know, yeah. but there's a lot of people, you know, we've heard this before. Every industry is like, oh, well, you'll get a lot of exposure, right? Mm-hmm. Um, let's talk a little bit about that in terms of the difference between like exposure and what you did with Marshall, which was clear, a, a much more, you know, actual influence on your brand and like um, pu- public relations marketing. So talk about yeah. that a little bit. Great mm-hmm. question. I think people people confuse exposure and right. exploitation. Ah, okay. Exposure Fair. and exploitation. And the other thing people confuse, exposure, mm-hmm. exploitation, and expectation. Most times when right. people say company exposure, mm-hmm. they're not exposing you. You right. have to expose yourself. That's the right. part where the expectation falls down because it's like, well, I'm doing this thing for, for X and they say that I get my exposure, but I sit down home in my cave and I can see them post my name. Mm-hmm. They may put no credit to my thing. Bro, you have to make that exposure. Own it. Own right. it. Push it out there. That was a thing I remember. Again, I had to big up my mom for this one. I was doing makeup mm-hmm. at the time. And of course, what I do only lasts for a little while. I put the blood on your face or whatever, mm-hmm. make it into a manicure or whatnot. And when they finish with the shooting, it's, mm-hmm. it's wiped off. Right. So at the end of the day, when you see the movie, you see a manicure. You don't see the makeup artist. So how else is somebody supposed to know Stephen did it if there is no documentation of me having any involvement with the product. Right. So my mom told me once, well, bro, you're not taking, and she said, yes, well, bro, you're not taking any photos. She so, was like, Stephen, <laughs> boy, dog, boy. <laughs> yeah, boy, whom, boy, dog, boy, right? <laughs> and essentially, that's where, of course, you know, I started to document the moment. And okay. learned that I had to wear many hats as a creative now starting off. As a creative now mm-hmm. starting off, you are the product at first. Then when you're negotiating with the client or the vendor, whoever is giving you the job, you are the agent. Then when you are finished with your job and you documented on set, you are the photographer documenting your own work. Then you switch the hat into marketer. Most times people just want to be creative and they want the work to automatically expose itself because we don't want to wear 
these hats and we really don't know how to use exposure. Exposure is the greatest thing. And I hear so many creatives talking about, uh, anyone's exposure. If you know how to position exposure, mm -hmm. if you know when to pivot exposure, if you know what steps to take that would lead you to greater exposure, exposure is money, exposure is currency. Especially okay. in this day and age, exposure is gold. If DJ Khaled offers me exposure, yeah, DJ for real dog, you just want a Grammy home. It's like, where's your real life? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you've got to know how to use this exposure and mm -hmm. also weigh the value of it. Get rid mm -hmm. of your expectations and start to pump. Run with it. Go with it faster mm -hmm. all over the place. So that's so, for me how I would respond to exposure. I think it's valuable once you know how to position it and what yeah. steps you need to take in order to make this exposure valuable for you. Don't waste time and don't wait on somebody else to do it. That is that is excellent. I don't want this this question to go forgotten. Superwoman Lizzie was asking, and I think this is a, a bit um, out there, but what are your views on the NGOs that were established for the creative sector? I have no views on the NGOs that are established for the creative sector because I feel mm -hmm. like creative sectors have been NGOs for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, All right. I mean, I, I hope, that, uh, hope that answers you. Stephen, this has been like bananas. I, I was... I fully expected you to come like fantastic and this is blown away. Even, even my greatest expectations. Um, so, I mean, guys, are, are there any questions? It's been a lot. Um, it's been a lot I've to seen take a in. Bunch. I've seen a oh. bunch here. Let me just hear out some peeps. Navi, let's see Daniel. Decoded mm. says, preach, take them to church. <laughs> Lecture. A uh, yep. bunch of folks there, Peter. If you like any vibe, drop drop some flames in the comments. Let me know the thing with you know Robert and I talking here so intimately. Just right. drop some flames in the comments so we know we we see you one here and look Kyle Kyle what's up Kyle Far Senior Josiah Senior Ariana Senior Angela Senior Josh a Senior Superwoman a Senior Khadija Katrim Katrim is saying Stephen you sound like you went to Saint Mary's College boy Katrim why why are you insulting wow. man so boy. That's why I'm not seeing Katrim at all. You seen him on your oh, side? <laughs> disrespectful. Oh. Wow. <laughs> the hate. Yeah, so guys, any questions you have? Of course, I just need to footnote this by and I see in your flames. Mm -hmm. Everybody's experience is different. I am not prescribing a one size fit all. Right. I am saying if you your life is a reflex closely to what I've experienced. Mm -hmm. You need to first be intrinsically motivated. And you know who showed me that, Robert? Mr. Joseph, the art teacher in QRC. Really? On the steps outside the staff room, he said, Stephen, there's a difference with extrinsic and intrinsic motivation. I said, mm -hmm. what's that? And I crossed mm -hmm. my leg, leaned up on the wall, waiting for the wisdom to uh -huh. bless me. And he said, it's like money. Some people are motivated by money. But the thing with money, it goes away. It can be spent, it can burn, it can, you know, it goes away. But with intrinsic motivation, you carry it wherever you go. It also makes you, um, you can't be bought. That's right. my greatest gift. I cannot be bought. There's mm -hmm. no amount of money makes me say yes. There's no yeah. amount of money makes me go in a direction that I don't want to go. You got to really do the work inside and be intrinsically motivated. So you now know what steps to take, be it exposure, be it batter, be it saying no. There, there yeah. are so many times I said no. It's not about doing a lot. It's about doing the things that matter. It's really mm -hmm. not about doing a lot. So, so essentially, let's, 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 let's dive in. I've seen some questions here in truth. Um, Superwoman Lizzie was asking, do you think that gender influences the creative experience in the marketplace? Well, um, so I'll first say I can only speak for myself as a, as a male gender, mm -hmm. however they describe it. Um, mm -hmm. so I can't say for sure, but I understand from my female colleagues that it could be but I don't think it's much of a thing now because of the landscape that we are in and the yeah. space that we are in now in context. 
I know that it does play a role in when I lived in the States being black. That was yeah. a scene. You know, people being surprised that you have a mind above your shoulders. You know, people being surprised that from Trinidad you would have, you know, done all of these things. So I know mm -hmm. it does, but use it to your advantage. You ever hear like on the cell and then, you know, come in the room and then bang. What was you saying there, Robert? What did they say? Uh, un under promise and over deliver. Yes, use your gender like that. All right, you think I'm a girl or you think I'm a boy and I don't know this? All right, cool. Get into the room and then boom, deliver. But when mm. you go into deliver, be ready. So for yeah. me, it's just like knowing what the shortcomings are, knowing what societal expectations are, and preparing yourself for the, mo the moment to blow that away. Right. I think, that's, I think that's actually really good advice. You know, people, people keep telling me, about different things and I don't want to get too much into it, but people keep telling me like, you know, oh, society should be this and society should be that. I'm like, yeah, it should be, but it's not. And you have to live and thrive in it, you know? So use your knowledge of what it is and leverage that. Um, so Stephen, I, we've blown past our 30 minutes um, timeline. What I'm going to say is, is there any last words you want to leave for the team? Um, to only, only people that are online now before well, we, we wrap up? I want to say, like, those soca artists. Are they ready to go home? No. Are they ready to go home? <laughs> Are they ready? If you're ready to go home, say you're ready to go home. If you're not, and you need 10 more minutes, tell Robert, stay put, we inside. <laughs> I just want to say, no, Robert, I know you have a strict mm -hmm. timeline, and you guys have committed a lot of your time to hear us mm -hmm. out. Essentially, I would say this. Again, mm -hmm. um, these, these are my opinions. This is mm. how my life was and the things that I've learned along the way from various mentors. I didn't mm. come up with these things on my own. I didn't just land on the earth and be like, ah. no, I was open. I listened and I mm. try not to make the same mis mis mistakes by learning from other people. I mm. also put God at the center of my life. I am very in tune with that. I am quick to say yes. I don't rush into a bunch of opportunities, really mm -hmm. take some time and know what you need to move forward. Exposure is not a bad thing if you know how to turn it into currency, especially mm -hmm. in this day and age. Right now, Robert and pay me mm -hmm. for this talk. None of y'all pay me for all of this. None of y'all. <laughs> well, Robert is not getting paid for this either, just so you guys know. This is a labor of love for me. A labor oh. of love. So Robert, yeah. man, I learned stuff from Robert like, even before I was asked. I learned so much from him when he was talking about e-commerce and all of that just on this same life. And essentially, we've been exposed. You know, there's a little bit of exposure happening, etc. But <laughs> if you know how to put that and put it in the right channels, it's a mm -hmm. great means to move to the next level. Also, you need to have a close circle of friends or colleagues who are like-minded. If it is you trying to rise to the top and your brethren is not, or your sisters, it's going to be a very hard space for you to move in that direction. You'll mm -hmm. be like if you're, you, you're awkward or you're weird or you're yeah. strange. But if you're around yeah. people like Robert, people like Kenneth, who I see there, Matthew Bailey, people like even Daniel Loveless, mm -hmm. he, you know, he's one of my mm -hmm. clients, but he motivates me even to push even harder. Yeah. Those sort of spaces really make you flourish. And just like put yourself out there, tell your real story. And, um, you know, when you have a chance, Get some Reem granola to feed your heart. <laughs> Shout out to Reem, guys. Reem, um, boop, boop, boop. So just to, just to recap for anybody who's kind of now joining in, to, well, shameless plug, if you like this stuff, subscribe to the Instagram channel, subscribe to the YouTube channel. The video is going to be live on both by tomorrow. Um, you know, I want to I wanna underscore that point that you made about having a good circle. You know, um, it sounds corny, but I wish that you know, the circle of friends that, that I had 10 years ago was talking about things like investments and, and, and stock and things like that. And, you know, these things, they, all they need is time for, the, for them to really grow. And it was really, I'll just a quick story. When I started, I kicked off a, a, a little um, taxi app way before Uber came into the market. You know, I found it very lonely because I didn't have people who were in the same circle who were, who were like, you know, entrepreneurs. It was hard to talk to people who weren't entrepreneurs about all I want to talk about is this thing that I'm working on because it's a passion project, you know? I remember um, that, Robert. I remember that. 
so definitely guys if if you think the circle that you're in is not you know and there's nothing wrong with having friends who're not interested in the things that you're interested in you know it's variety is spice of life but the circle that you want to keep motivating you you know that's that's definitely going to be valuable to to change that and, and look for people who are on that same path um yeah so guys just to recap the the points the first thing is using your creativity as currency not just the creative art form that you chose but being creative in itself as a creative person you're not necessarily limited to the things that you are trained to do um don't take no for an answer you know creating value comes in many different forms as steven said you know guys you can look at the the thing again all the different things he did to raise the money to make sure that no was not the answer to his dreams um knowing your worth in terms of saying you know listen my work is worth 10 dollars if you only have 5 give me something else in kind that um that is worth the other 5 and you know how much exposure and um exploitation are so close together um and how to really leverage that so steven i want to thank you again for your your time this was fantastic i think the the chat was going off everybody really enjoyed it so thank you so much for your time guys everybody we will see you next week thank you very much everybody thanks robert i really appreciate the invitation and of course y'all i don't like to leave people hanging so if you all want more of this i do have a consultancy that i run kila consultancy shame as plug Mm-hmm. and um you could always jump into my dms if you want and check out my website at steven taylor film i hate to come to these things and just blab and leave people hanging if you have more questions and you want to connect you can use those uh avenues my dms are open check yeah. out um ask about taylor consultancy and you could view my website at steven taylor film robert is a boss everybody on the live thank you uh, just two last things a three voice talent was create your own opportunities definitely Um as Steven said you know don't as a friend of mine says he actually does the artwork for digital for everyone he says i don't dream in dialect you know ah. your your creativity doesn't have to end at the borders you know you can go any anywhere else and yes um Kenneth i do have a man but now it's thanks Kenneth eh? i was trying to just ignore it, <laughs> <laughs> it there's nothing else to do in um quarantine than than grow my hair but thanks again guys um reach out to Steven uh for anything else you want and yeah <laughs> use the code digital for everyone to get 10% off your bag of um ream granola <laughs> <laughs> so we'll talk soon guys cheers take care bye take it easy see you next week <laughs>